It doesn't sound that difficult. Cruise the mountains in a helicopter and simply count how many goats you see. Wildlife biologist Mike Scott and pilot Ron Geip are conducting mountain goat surveys. Every four to six years, the Idaho Department of Fish and Game flies the various mountain ranges of Idaho to evaluate the health and density of our mountain goat population. The country like this poses its own unique challenges. These are the White Cloud Peaks, a spiny range that boasts all the classic, craggy, and jagged elements that are distinctive to the northern Rocky Mountains. When you fly goat habitats, you fly an awful lot of country that doesn't have very many animals in it. It's, it's not productive ground. Uh, a lot of sterile, rocky soil that isn't producing very much. And goat densities don't get very high. Uh, it's rough, craggy, steep, cliffy, a uh, nasty place to make a living. We have some goat populations in the region that are doing very well as these white clouds goats are. They're uh, uh, up at around 300 goats, which is, which is very good. Lots of goats in this particular area. This may sound like quite a large number, but they're scattered over 300 square miles of backcountry. In the winter, goats tend to gather in small groups of three or four that stay in one place. It appears that they survive in these harsh conditions by remaining relatively stationary and conserving energy rather than foraging extensively for food. That is, until a helicopter appears. Goats don't like helicopters at all. They're going to move. Uh, they're, and typically what they try and do is get under cover of some kind. Uh, the theory is that's because they grew up with basically just avian predators, uh, eagles for instance, when they're small. And they'll try and dive under rock ledges into little crannies. They'll dive under trees. And so it's, uh, it's kind of a challenge to get good goat pictures from a helicopter because they'll move from you. Even in the summer, mountain goats remain in the relative safety of these craggy high cliffs. Goats have never been plentiful, but population numbers seem to remain steady. A female does not produce her first kid until the age of three and rarely has twins. If the young offspring manages to evade eagles and the occasional mountain lion in its first summer, it has a good chance of reaching adulthood. The factors that seem to affect mountain goat populations the most are weather patterns, accidents, snow slides or falls from a cliff, and of course changes in habitat. Helicopter surveys help biologists recommend a management plan for the species. We're just trying to monitor the populations of goats, see whether they're going up and down, see whether or not a population is big enough to uh, sustain a harvest. Uh, we know from past experience in Idaho and lots of other western states that you've got to be pretty conser conservative with uh, goat permits. They can't take much harvest and goat populations start to go downhill, so we have to actually be fairly conservative on our permits and, and, uh, and monitor them. Monitoring the mountain goat population in this rugged country involves some pretty tricky flying, an integral part of the job that is taken very seriously. Uh, it, it challenges me to, to play the winds, the upslope winds and, uh, and the downslope winds. Uh, you, just, you just have to be on top of it. And uh, uh, it is challenging. Biologists from the Idaho Department of Fish and Game will fly over 2,000 hours in 1994 conducting wildlife counts, capturing animals for research studies, surveying salmon habitat and planting fish in Idaho's mountain lakes. Naturally, there's a certain amount of risk involved in all flying, but operating an airplane or helicopter at low altitude through Idaho's rugged backcountry adds another element of danger. Nine people Two of them department employees have been killed in fixed wing and helicopter accidents since 1970 while flying for fish and game. One survivor is Mike Scott. It was the spring of 1987. Mike, a conservation officer and a pilot, were flying in a Hiller helicopter along the middle fork of the Salmon River counting bighorn sheep. They were on their way back to base camp when the tail rotor failed. And we did go into a spin. We just spun into the mountainside and rolled down the hill. Um, pretty nasty, pretty nasty accident. Uh, kind of a combination of equipment failure and, and pilot error put us on the ground. Uh, that was about six o'clock in the evening and, and uh, the officer and I uh, were, oh, we had some minor injuries, but the pilot was pretty seriously injured. And, 
and uh, we couldn't get out to anyone, couldn't talk to anyone, no one could find us until the next morning. And, and by that time, the pilot had died during the course of the night, so uh, I guess for me personally, that's when I started taking the flying a lot more seriously, particularly the safety. The department had just begun the process of revising its air safety policy when Mike's accident occurred. Things changed considerably after the crash, beginning with the procedure for acquiring air services. Now all pilots and helicopters are required to be approved by the U.S. Office of Aircraft Service, or OAS. These days, there's also a check-in procedure where the aircraft is contacted every hour from the ground. Yeah, hell, it's going 30 knots here. Just gusting like hell. As you may well imagine, it was pretty tough for Mike to climb into a helicopter again. For a while, he thought he might have to consider doing something else for a living. I, I get, uh... Oh, probably 100 hours of airtime a year. And by the time you do that over the course of three or four years, you can start to get comfortable with it again. But uh, yeah, it bothered me. I, that was a tough time for two or three years. And you still think about it, especially in, when you're doing something like goat flying, because it's, uh, it's not particularly any more dangerous than any other kind of flying that we do. It just is, the terrain is so much scarier. Scary to us, perhaps. But home to that incredibly sure-footed creature, the shaggy mountain goat.